unboxing and review of the Yamaha SLG 200S silent guitar. And before we get into the review, there's two main versions of this guitar, the SLG 200S and the SLG 200N. And the S stands for steel strung and the N stands for nylon strung. And I'll be unboxing the steel strung version today. This guitar was ordered from Toman and it arrived in an absolutely massive box which I just had to take a picture of it outside because it wouldn't fit on my desk. Right, let's get it out of the box and I'll speed this bit up by two times just to get through it more quickly. And initially I thought it just had four staples in but I was wrong because it's actually got six staples in. And there's two on the edge there. Inside the Toman box is the Yamaha box. So it's obviously double box, which is really good, especially when you consider that Toman are based in Germany and I'm based in the UK. So it's clearly been shipped by airmail. And being double boxed, you're far less likely to end up with a damaged guitar. And inside the two boxes and a plastic bag is a gig bag and this is provided free with a guitar and I completely understand why because this is a really non-standard style of guitar as you'll see when I open it. I must admit though to get to this guitar it's a bit like past the parcel. We go from one box to another box to a plastic bag to a gig bag and then finally we'll have the guitar. The gig bag is a really good quality bag and it's properly padded so it will protect your guitar from most bangs and knocks. And to get into the bag we have to loosen off the velcro across the handle and then unzip two zips which go around to the side of the bag. A pretty standard system. And the first sight you get of the guitar is just through the slot of the bag and you can see it's in two parts there. And I chose a dark wood colour because I like the look of that and it looks like it's everything I expected it to be. Let's take it out and take a closer look at it. The guitar itself obviously comes in two pieces, so I'll just get those out of the bag. Twang, twang. And I'll just get the bag out of the way. To put the guitar together, you've got two holes in the main body and two metal lugs on what I'll call the wing and you literally just push the metal lugs into the holes on the body but make sure the screws are loose which are actually also the strap locks. Once you've pushed the wing into the side of the guitar and got it firmly into place you just tighten up the strap locks and that's it, done. The mounting system for the wing is really well designed. It's metal and it's set in in the body so that you're really unlikely to scratch the body trying to get the lub in the hole, which was one of my concerns. And once you've tightened the screws up properly, the whole guitar is really solid, as you can see here. Right, let's take a look at what comes with the guitar, which is all in the side pocket on the gig bag. And in the side pocket is an owner's manual, some earphones, two AA batteries and a strap for the bag. The earphones look okay, they're Yamaha brand and it's a standard stereo jack plug type which is great and I don't think they're anything special but most people have their own headphones these days and being a standard jack plug size at least you can easily replace them if you want to. We'll see how they sound in a minute. Right. The batteries are just AA batteries, what you'd expect, but it's unusual because a lot of these preamps, the, certainly the preamps on all the guitars I've got, are the square 9 volt battery type. It's the first time I've come across one which is the uh, two 1.5 volt batteries, uh, so I don't know how long they'll last. Uh, I guess we'll just have to find that out over time. And something I didn't notice when I first pulled out the bag is the fact that there's an Allen key in there for adjusting your truss rod if you have to. And that's really handy to have, obviously. Now that I've got the batteries out, I might as well put them in the guitar. 
and the batteries live behind this panel here which absolutely flies across the room when you release it. And the batteries are easy enough to fit. When these guitars first came out they were really polarising. Half of the people who saw them really loved them and half of the people who saw them really hated them. Here's a good look at it so you can see what you think. Right, let's take a look at the features on this guitar and we'll start with the input and outputs. And on the back of the guitar you have a standard jack plug out socket which will go to any guitar amp or straight into a mixing desk. On the top of the guitar by the controls we have a headphone socket which is a standard headphone impedance and on the bottom of the guitar as you would have it sat on your knee we have an auxiliary in so you can plug an mp3 player or something into it and also you'll notice alongside that you can use a power supply rather than the batteries if you're using the guitar for long periods right let's take a look at the control panel and we'll look at the controls from left to right or going from the battery panel and the first one we come across is the power button and you have to hold this for more than half a second to turn it on and then more than a second to turn it off and next to that we have the tuner button and the next one on from that is the master volume control below and slightly along from that we have the blend control which blends between the pickup and it says mic on the control but let me just read to you what it says in the instructions the blend control mixes the signal from the pickup and the signal from the simulated Bosi resonance produced by the SRT powered system and that's Yamaha's own simulation system and rather than going into the technical gump I'll show you what that does later in the video the next two controls on are the treble and bass and that's obviously the EQ so you can balance the guitar the way you want to make it sound how you like it to sound. And next to those is the auxiliary level control and this is so if you do have an mp3 player or something plugged into the auxiliary socket you can control the volume of it from here. And the final control is the effects control and this one knob gives you access to two types of reverb and a chorus and we'll take a closer look at how these work and sound later in the video right let's turn it on and tune it up and I'll tune it with its own tuner but we'll monitor it with a separate tuner just so we can make sure it's accurate Any slight discrepancies you might be seeing between the two tuners I think are more to do with the fact that the external tuner isn't plugged into the guitar and it's relying on its own internal microphone 
and the silent guitar, as the name suggests, is very quiet. So it's doing well to keep up as well as it is. But overall, I think you'll agree that the accuracy of the internal tuner is really good. So I think this is a successful test. It's worth me pointing out though, that the strings that are on the guitar feel like they're anti-rust coated and they're a fairly heavy gauge. And because of these two factors, they're sticking on the nut, which means sometimes you'll turn a machine head and the tuning won't change for a bit and then it'll suddenly shoot past where you wanted it to go. However, this isn't a problem with the guitar and it's easily sorted. But on a really positive note, the machine heads are excellent. They've got just the right tension and they seem to work really well. They're very smooth and very positive. Really good machine heads. If it's really important to you that the guitar is completely silent, it isn't obviously. And the sound you're hearing now is being picked up by the microphone on the camera, which isn't particularly sensitive. And in most environments, you won't be able to hear the guitar outside the room. So I can't imagine it disturbing anyone. But you never know. Right, let's plug it in and see how it sounds. And straight away I found something that isn't particularly pleasant. When I plugged it in the mixing desk was still up quite high and there's a clear hiss coming from the guitar. Now, as I play with the controls on the guitar they have no effect whatsoever on the hiss. Apart from the volume, it slightly gets louder when you higher the guitar, but when you lower it, even when the guitar's turned right down, the hiss is still there in the background. This has always been a problem with Yamaha devices. I used to play Yamaha keyboards in the 80s and 90s and they did exactly the same thing. However, when you set the mixing desk to a sensible level and turn the guitar to where you want to record it, then you can hardly hear the hiss. It's very, very distant. So it really doesn't make much difference unless you're going to be recording multiple layers of the same guitar. Right, let's see how the guitar sounds. And the first thing I'll do is just test that blend control to see what it does. And I'll play the same riff over and over again, but with the blend in different positions. This is all pickup. This is 50-50 between pickup and mic. This is all mic. Here they are again, so you can have a good listen, starting in the all pick up position again. This is 50 50 between pick up and mic. This is all mic. Here's the three positions, just with basic strumming, starting in the pickup position again. Is 50 50 between pickup and mic. And 
here it is right over to the mic position. The pickup sound and the microphone sound are quite different and the fact that you can balance between the two means you've got a real variation in the voices the guitar can produce. Right, let's have a quick look at the effects and first I'll look at the reverbs and I'll just click the strings because I think that gives you the best idea of what the reverb's doing. And we'll start with the first reverb on a low setting. Now here's the first reverb at a fairly high setting, about three quarters of the way up. Here it is high. Now here's the second reverb, about a quarter of the way up. About three quarters of the way. You can't judge chorus by a click, but here it is anyway. Here's a longer example of the first reverb. Here's a longer example of the second reverb. Here's a longer example of the chorus effect. As a final test, I thought I'd check the auxiliary in and how that mixed. And all I could think of, of checking it with was my latest upload, which was the backing track for the Troubled Heart. So here's the first few bars of that mixed in, in the guitar, and here's how it sounds. In conclusion then, I'm sure you'll agree, it sounds wonderful. The hiss I found at the beginning, once you'd balanced it out, you didn't know it was there. And it's not affected the recordings at all. 
I didn't adjust the treble or the bass on the inbuilt EQ and I did nothing on the mixing desk. Neither did these recordings go through any effects, noise gates or anything like that. This is exactly as it came out of the guitar. But listening back to the recording, in hindsight I might have knocked back the bass a little bit because I think the bass can be a little overpowering. The feel of the guitar is a little strange. My brain was telling me it sounds like an acoustic, but it feels like an electric. And if you look here, it's not much bigger than a Gibson Les Paul. Also, the wood isn't sealed shut so it's a smooth finish. You can see the grain's slightly open, and this even applies to the back of the neck. But it's not a bad thing, it's just something that it takes getting used to. Another thing to note is that you can feel the quality. Um, being a skeleton guitar, there's obviously less material in there. However, it's fairly heavy considering how much wood is there. And this is because of the density of the material. And they've obviously used good quality materials to put this guitar together. It's also worth noting, it really holds its tune well. During the whole of this filming and outtakes, I only had to tune the guitar once and it held its tuning all that time. And after completing all the filming for this video, I put the voiceover on last. So since filming this, I've changed the strings to lighter strings which are more suitable to my style of play. And even with lighter strings on, it really holds the tuning well. And I think the only thing that's left to mention is the headphones in the headphone socket. Their headphones I don't get on with, I don't like that style of headphone. So I did most of the headphone tests with my over ear style headphones which I feel more comfortable using. And through headphones it is crystal clear and it sounds amazing. And you really see why you need a little bit of reverb when you use the headphones because you don't get any room ambience. So just a little bit of reverb makes it sound absolutely wonderful. Now. I bought this guitar and I've got no connections with Yamaha, so this is a completely independent review. But I absolutely love this guitar and it's inspired me to re-record some of my old recordings because the sound you can get out of this guitar is amazing. And there are advantages to it not being a true acoustic in that the sound produced isn't tainted by any natural acoustics you've got complete control over the sound coming out of the guitar. And there are great benefits to that if you haven't got a soundproof booth or expensive equipment. So that concludes this review and I hope you really found it useful. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Or if you want some guitar lessons that are completely free, take a look at my channel in the playlists and there are complete courses there in different aspects of guitar playing. And you can also find these courses at ebooksforguitar.com. Thank you very much for watching.